In this tutorial, I'll show you how to take a blog that you have installed in a subdirectory on your site and move it to root. So we'll use this test blog as an example. If you look in the URL, it's installed in a subdirectory called test. Uh, and I have some sample posts here and it's all working properly uh, on the site in my test subdirectory. Now there are a couple ways to do this. One technique is just to move all your blog source code into the root directory and have it operate from there. And the other method of doing it is to keep your blog, uh, the major source files, in that subdirectory but then still have it look like it's uh, operating from within root. So in this first video I'm going to show you how to actually move it to the root directory of your file and then I'll create another one to show you how to keep it in a subdirectory but make it look like it's in root. So to do that uh, what we'll do here is we'll go to uh, FTP manager and look at where we have this test directory. Uh, here's my public HTML. I have several blogs installed on this edutalk.org in subdirectories. There's one in blog, blog 4, blog 5, uh, these are just normal directories. This test is the one that we're looking at. So if I want a test to operate out of root, uh, the first thing that I would want to do is to make sure that I'm, if I'm going to have it in root that I have no other index or default file in root. Because if I have that then it could cause problems. There could be conflicts as to which one a browser opens and so forth. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you're going to put your blog in root, uh, think that through. Uh, then uh, that's uh, the only index file that you should really have in root. So for the purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to save my index file that's there off and then I'm going to delete my index that's in root. So I have no index in the root of my directory. Uh, then I'm going to go into my test subdirectory and I'm going to select all of my files. The, this comprises all of your WordPress files in that test subdirectory and I'm going to move them out to public HTML. Okay, now they're out to public HTML so if I look now I have still my individual blogs installed in subdirectories but I have the one that was in test now all of the files for that blog setting out in root including my index.php. Once I've done that then I don't really need the test directory any longer it's empty and so I'm going to highlight test and delete it. And then what I need to do once I get it out is to go to my um, database and make some changes. Now I could have logged into my blog first before I moved it and changed my URL and home in settings general and then I would have been able to log into my blog here and access it fine. But there would still be some problems with the uh, some URLs in my database. So the way that I prefer to do this is to change those URLs in the database manually. Uh, so the next step that I need to do to make sure that my blog works is to go to phpMyAdmin to my database for this blog and this one's installed in database 5 on my site. Now in this one database I have several blogs installed. Uh, you may only have one installed in your database but here uh, the test uh, tables are the tables for the blog that I just moved. Uh, and um, again, when if you're not sure what database is associated with your blog or if you have more than one blog in a database, then you may want to go to your config file, open it, and that will tell you the database that this blog is associated with. It's blog 5. Uh, and then it will tell you the prefix to the tables. It's test. So I know my test blog was in my database 5 and the tables are test. So when I go to phpMyAdmin, there's blog 5 and there are my test tables. If I only had one blog in this database, those would be the only tables in the database. But notice here I have several. So I don't really want to dump this entire database. I just wanted to dump these tables. So I'm going to go to export and by default all of the tables are selected. So I'm going to unselect them and then I'm just going to manually select only the ones that are prefixed with test. I'm holding down my shift key, clicking on the last one, and then all of my test tables are selected. I'm going to leave it set at SQL, leave all of the other options over here set to default, save file as, go, and save. And then I'm going to save this SQL file that dumps 
onto my computer somewhere. Now that SQL file is on the desktop, I need to make a few changes to it. So I'm going to open that SQL file now in a text editor program. And I like to use Edit Plus. Uh, you can just Google it and find it, but you could use anything. You could use Notepad uh, to edit this with or any other text editor that you might like. Uh, so we're going to edit this and what I'm going to do is change all instances of my URL now to have this blog direct back to root. But to show you here the site URL is edgechalk.org slash test and the home URL in options is edgechalk.org slash test. I want those to just be edgechalk.org now because that's where my blog exists. Now you could have gone in before you move the blog, you could have logged in and changed those two values in the settings general table just through WordPress. But if you do that, you would only be changing those two values. And if you have a blog that has uh, anything in it, then you're going to have other values in the database as well that's going to be referring back to that subdirectory, edgechalk.org test there, uh, edgechalk.org test here. So there'll be several other places in your blog uh, that need to be changed. Edgechalk.org test page 4 and 5 and so forth. So the way to get all those changed is to do it through this dumping of your database tables. Come here in a text editor and do a search and replace. And I'm going to search, replace, and then I'm going to look for all instances of edgechalk.org at test and I'm going to replace that with just edgechalk.org. And when I do that, just to show you again the importance of doing it this way, I'm going to move over. If you look down at the footer here, when I make this changed, it'll tell you, when I make this change, it will tell you how many of those instances it actually replaced in the database. So when I hit replace all, notice 20 occurrences uh, of that address was changed in this database. You would only be changing two of them if you would logged into your interface of WordPress to do it. So if I do it here, then I don't need to worry about having old incorrect URLs in my database. So I do that change, save my SQL file. Now I go back to select your database. So I'm just going to put a check by all the tables that have test prefix. Again, if you only had one, you could just go to the bottom and say check all. I don't want to do that because I don't want to drop the other tables. And then go down to the bottom and with selected drop and it'll ask you do you really want to do it say yes and that drops all of your tables for the test blog if you only had one blog in your database you'd see you have no tables now your database would still be there but there'd be no tables in the database then come over to import once you drop those tables browse find the database the SQL file on your computer that you changed it's that one once you've done that then make sure that you have partial import checked. It's a SQL file and click go. And that will import your database tables, change database tables back into your database. Now if I look on the left, there are all my test tables back. Uh, and now they have the proper uh, URL. If I were to look at the options table, right quick, browse, look at that first URL, there it is, edgechalk.org. And all other instances in the database have been changed. So once I do that, then I'm done. I should be able to go back now to my test blog. If I refresh now, notice test, it can't find it because I moved it. But if I come back out to the root now, just to my normal web address, there's my test blog. So to recap, it's pretty simple. All you have to do essentially is to go into your directory that your blog is in, click on it, move all of the files in that directory out to public HTML, making sure that you don't have anything out there already that you're going to overwrite. Now I wouldn't want to do that again here of course. If I were to come into blog 4 and move all of these out to public HTML then I'm going to overwrite a blog that's already there. So you, uh, uh, when you do this another thing that you need to keep in mind is you, you want to make sure that you don't have anything in public HTML already that is the same file name or directory name of something that you're moving out of your blog into there. Okay, So that's just common sense. But uh, to do it, if you have your blog in a subdirectory, just go into that subdirectory, move all your files out to public HTML, go to your database, update your URL in your database, uh, and then you should be good to go.